Um, let's move on to something else that we have in here. Oh, actually, let's talk about the Windows 10 EOL thing, because that actually is kind of relevant. Um, in case you don't know, Windows 10 is going EOL in October of this year, 2025. October? End of October, wait. Is it, does it go EOL last day of October or in the start of October? Uh, Windows 10 EOL, it doesn't really matter, it's like 20 days apart. No, middle of it. 14th of October 2025, so middle of October, Windows 10 will go EOL. Now, supposedly, 60% of active PCs are using Windows 10. Let's see what the Steam numbers are like, actually. Steam Hardware Survey. I actually got one on my Linux system the other day, so uh, the number is slightly higher for Linux. The extra one vote. So, right now... 0.15% of people are still on Windows 7. Jesus Christ. Um, Windows 10 is 42.39% of the 96% on Windows. So that's... Like, 40-ish percent? Yeah, somewhere in that range. That is on the gaming market. Most people have moved over to Windows 11. But... Is not everyone. There's still a lot of people that are on Windows 10. And I don't think it's going to change drastically by the end of the year. So, I don't know what Microsoft's plan is going to be here. I don't know if they're going to say, well, let's push out a free update to people. So, they, they did... um. They did sort of rescind the restrictions on Windows 11 installation. Uh, the current, like the the current way they've rescinded it is basically uh, you can install it, but you won't get updates. And like that's an officially supported thing they've mentioned on their blog now. I don't know if they're gonna roll that back even further just to get more people on, and then maybe like roll out, like, an update prompt that's like, hey, update to Windows 11 now, and it just... Or even just... <laughs> they've done this before. Roll it into a automatic update. So, I think back during Windows 8 to 10, some people actually got rolled over during a Windows update. <laughs> Which, look, I would not be... I would not, like, hold... Uh, what's the word? I'm not, um say they would never do that again. Okay. It would not surprise me if they, uh... If they tried to do something... <laughs> if they tried to do something like that. It would be very, very, very amusing. But this happens every time that a Windows EOL comes up. When do... Okay. You know what? Let's actually go and do this. Um, Windows 8, you know, I think Windows 8 was a bit different. I think most people moved to Windows 10 by then. Um, so January 10th, 2023. Let's actually go and check the Steam hardware survey. I believe, I believe Windows 7 was a lot worse than, um, than, than the Windows 8 one. Because most people weren't on Windows 8 anyway. Um, so let's go, uh, 2023. Let's go into the February survey. Or I guess into February should have the January results, theoretically. Yes? No? What month is this? That is showing the December results. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, I literally went to February. Why are those results not out? Let's go to March then. Yes? No? Show me the money. What do you got? There we go. January 2023. Okay. So... Yeah, this was a yeah, this was a very different one. So most people moved over to Windows 10. Base wait, this is not right. Oh no, no, that is okay, no, that's the right one. Yeah, yeah. So most people moved over to Windows 10, and Windows 11 was already a thing when Windows 8 went EOL. And most people didn't use Windows 8 anyway. Let's try it for this will actually be a better one. Um let's go to the Windows 7 EOL. Because that one definitely that one definitely will show my point. 
Um, 2020. Okay. It's just Windows 8 was such a controversial release that people just didn't... People did not like that version. People didn't swap to it when it came out. People didn't swap to it when Windows 10 came out. They just jumped straight from 7 to 10. Archive.org. Do not let me down. Oh, they changed the colors at one point. Do you realize that? Um... Okay, it actually wasn't as bad back then. So this is February 2020. So Windows 7 still had 12% of the market share. But Windows 10? Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When did Windows 10 drop? Hold up, hold up. This is the Windows 7 EOL. Windows 10 release date 2015 okay i i guess they released things in a weird order that uh, a weird time gap um i guess there was a lot more gap between it but yeah um even when windows 7 went ear well it was only 12 percent windows 10 took up the majority of the market share so it's still a lot there but that's nothing like it is today today it is triple that market share also look at this in case you uh, haven't seen it um, Linux market share back then was 0.83%, with OS X being at 3.15%. Now it's closing in on the opposite. OS X is 1.6, with Linux being at 2.29. That is kind of crazy that Linux has more gaming market share now than OS X. Obviously, people don't buy an Apple machine to game, but... There are people who game who have an Apple machine. They will play like fucking Stardew Valley, Rocket League, whatever, League of Legends, things like that. Um, that's not on scene, but like you get you get my drift. People do game on their their MacBook, it or like their their Apple desktop, whatever the the the, the whatever they're called. Um, it's just yeah. Anyway, um, this is a problem for. Uh, this is, this is a, this is a, this is very much a problem for, uh, for our friends over at Microsoft. And how they're going to deal with it, well, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I honestly have no idea how they're going to address this. But it's something they're going to have to address. Because once Windows 10 goes EOL... More, more and more software is just going to stop drop, uh, just going to start dropping Windows 10 support. Even like, you know, oh, there's 40% of people on Windows 10. Doesn't matter. If it's EOL, developers are going to say, okay, well, it's EOL. No point supporting it. And we're actually, we, we, <laughs> we, I saw this one the other day. Um, this isn't Windows 10 being dropped, but it's, uh, Windows. It, it's still people trying to, like, keep Windows um, 7 around. So this is over on the OpenMW project. This is uh, an open source engine for getting Morrowind running. Uh, oh, sorry, they weren't on Windows 7. They were on 8.1. And they were complaining that the launcher does not work because it, it relies on um, DX12. Not because the game does... The game is an OpenGL game, but because they were using Qt6, apparently Qt6 on Windows uses DX12. Um, and they're like, oh, you should have kept you should have kept Qt5 around. Why are you not ke keeping Qt5 around? The game's going to work forever. And they're just like, fuck you. Um, we're not supporting a dead operating system. Use something else. And the, the thing is, they'd actually dropped support for it when the operating system went EOL. Like, this is not a new thing they did. They dropped it, like, three years ago. But this is some new person who is trying to run <laughs> OpenMW on their old Windows 8.1 system. And who out there is using 8.1? Like, no, 8.1 wasn't popular when it came out. It wasn't popular when it, like, it was dying. Who is using 8.1? To be fair, I used 8.1. Only because it was the current version at the time. I, I swapped from um, I swapped from Windows Seven straight to eight point one. I never used the uh, at least I never used on my home system the 
base version of 8. I did use 8 at my high school. I believe they had... Yeah, they had migrated over to Windows 8. But outside of that, uh, no. 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 That is, that is a no for me for Windows 8. When I saw videos on it at the time, I was like, nah, that's, that's, that's not for me. Definitely not doing that. Nope. I'm good. <laughs> so... Good luck, Microsoft, uh, dealing with this problem of people not migrating off your EOL operating systems. Imagine this in the world of Linux, right? Like, imagine there were people. <clears throat> imagine there were people who were like, oh, I hate. Yeah, you know what? Good, a great example of this actually. Imagine when, imagine when Ubuntu swapped from GNOME over to Unity. People were like, well. I don't want to use the Unity desktop. I'm going to keep using fucking whatever version, Ubuntu 12.04 or something, until 2020 or something like that. Or like the swap from Unity back to GNOME. People are like, oh, I'm going to use, I'm going to keep using the fucking 1604 until 2024. Like, this is just not a thing that happens in the Linux world. Now, there are people, don't get me wrong, there are absolutely people who don't upgrade their systems. This is a, uh, there's a blog post from Linux Mint from years ago. Uh, I wonder if I can find it. I did it. I think I did a video on it back when it came out. Um, Grady Robertson, Linux Mint update. I feel like I did a video on it when it came out, but I could have forgotten. It was like four years ago I did this video. If I had done the video. I don't even remember making that one. I did a, I did a reply to a Jay's Two Cents tweet. What the fuck is this video? Oh, he was he was asking why people game on Linux or why he will use Linux. Holy shit, that was a long ass time ago. Completely forgot about that. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Gardner Brian did a uh, did a video on that as well at the same time. Um Maybe I didn't do a video on it. I thought I did. Linux Mint users don't update. I'm not going to find it, am I? There was this blog post the author of Mint put out. A long... Wait, wait, is this it? Wait, is this the register talking about it? I think this might be the article, actually. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Update your computer. So, there was a very high propensity of people on Mint who were running a really old version. They were, like, the, the, the guess was 5 to 30% were using Linux Mint 17 in 2021, which went EOL in 2019. I have no doubt the number is probably around about the same now, if not more, with more people using Linux. Obviously not on that old of a version, but people not updating their system. Yeah, um, update your system, please. I know, I know people talk about, you know, ooh, Windows Update is annoying, and uh, it, it gets in the way of me doing things. Yeah, it does. It, 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 it pesters people way too much. If you tell it to go away, if you tell it you're busy, it's going to be like, ah, oh, okay, you're not busy anymore, time to restart. If you do that enough times, it actually will just restart in the middle of doing work, which is obviously very, very annoying. At the same time, though, even though Linux will not pester you in the same way, it does require being updated just as much. So, actually go and update your system. Make sure you're doing so. Don't just update and then not restart. Actually restart your system as well. 
I've spent a great many years trying to dispel the idea that Linux never needs to be restarted. This is a myth. It is bullshit. It is based on knowledge from the server space. Even then, it wasn't true. What it was is people who were, like, posting about, Ooh, I have 700 days uptime. I have 1,300 days uptime. And people were, like, using it as this fucking online dick measuring contest to just say, I can keep my system online longer. It was never a good idea to do, even though systems need to be updated, even if for the very minimum of just making sure the system can be turned off and turned back on again. Because there will come a point where you don't have a choice and it will need to be restarted. There'll be a power outage, and if you're dealing with a server, then your backup generator will go out of power, your UPS will go out of power, and then you're like, well, I don't know if the system can turn back on, I don't know if this can be recovered, you need to make sure things can actually be recovered, just that is a bare minimum. Very bare minimum.